Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to see how to access environment variables from our system using the Go programming language. This is kind of similar to what you saw in my previous examples, uh, one being loading uh, configuration properties from a JSON file at runtime, also passing in command line arguments at runtime. Uh, this all has to do with passing in configuration into our Go application, so this is just another option that we have. So you'll notice that I do have a Go file open in my editor. Um, I am within my Go path. We're going to start with a fresh project, but it's actually going to be very small. We're going to access um, some variables that we pass in. We're going to access some variables that are already stored on the system, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so let's go ahead and start by creating our new Go file. So I'm going to say package main. I'm going to add a new main function. So I'm going to say function main. And the first step that I'm going to do is, well, if we are passing in a environment variable. So we're kind of defining it at runtime. Uh, let's just go ahead and say fmt.println. Uh, let's go ahead and say that maybe this is output. Um, so maybe you want to specify an output path. Um, we're going to say output. And I'm going to say os.getenv. And I'm going to provide it the actual variable that, that it's being passed. So in this case, maybe I do want to define it as output. So typically, I mean, you don't have to, but but Typically, um, your your environment variables are, are all, all uppercase, um, but it doesn't have to be. Um, so let's go ahead and save it, and we're going to try to run it. You'll notice that it did automatically import my OS and uh, FMT. Um, your editor may not. Go ahead and add them if it did not. Um, so in the terminal, what I'm going to say is I'm going to say um, I'm going to say the following. So I'm going to say output equals. I'm going to say maybe uh, user slash enroboy slash output.txt. So uh, this this isn't actually going to do anything with this with this string, um, but at least maybe if, if we were assuming that this is a realistic scenario, we're providing it a path to some kind of file. Um, and I'm going to run it. So I'm going to say go run and main.go. Um, and you could easily do this with a built binary, um, but we're just going to run it as is like this. Um, so I'm going to run it. And you can see that even though I misspelled output, um, it still says that uh, that was what we output. Um, so that's one example. The other example, well, maybe we have our go path. So I can say echo uh, go path. This is something that's already set on my system. Um, so let's try to output that. Um, so I'm going to say, um, again, this this is no no relevance. It's just a string. But I'm going to say go path. And the environment variable is going to be uh, go path, one word. And I'm going to save it. I'm going to clear my terminal here. And this time around, I'm just going to say go run main.go. And you can see that I didn't I didn't define an environment variable at runtime. This is just something that's already available on my Mac OS path. Um, so that's another example. Um, and finally, if maybe we want to see what kind of environment variables are set on our system, we can change things up a bit. I'm going to erase this line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to do a loop. So I'm going to say four. Um, and I'm going to say that each uh, environment variable is going to be my my iteration. So I'm going to say equals range os dot environ like for environment and I'm gonna I'm gonna print out each one of them so I'm gonna say fmt dot print line and I'm gonna say env I can easily split it up so what's gonna happen is it's gonna be a string um, and it's gonna be kind of separated by an equal sign so you'll see when I when I print it out right now so I'm gonna clear this I'm gonna say go run main dot go uh, and you can see that it actually it actually printed out like that. So if I wanted to, I could split the string by the equal sign character, so that way I could separate it by key and value. Um, but I don't have to. Um, so as you as you saw, that it wasn't hard to access these environment variables in Go, uh, and it is particularly useful, especially if you want to maybe secure certain password information in your environment settings rather than hard coding it in your application or maybe even passing it in your application. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Um, and then it would mean a lot to me if you also hit that like button on the video itself.